Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Shape 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. So let's go ahead and bring in a Merge 3D node, a Camera 3D node, and a Render node. And let's connect them all up. Let's look at our 3D Merge. And let's go ahead and bring in a shape 3D node and we're going to connect it. So as you see what the shape 3D node does is it gives you a shape. And uh, let's go ahead and move this back. So once we've got a shape, we can go in the render node and we can see our shape covering our entire uh, screen there. So let's bring it back a little further. So what your shape 3D node does is it gives you basic shapes within the 3D world. So if we go to our controls and by default, it's given us a plane and all a plane is, is it's a flat surface and we can resize it using the size. We can lock our width and height so we can change the width. We can change the height independently. And right here for subdivisions, we can change our subdivisions. And if we take this wireframe, we can see how many subdivisions we have and how they're affecting. We also have a cube. And same with the cube, we've got a size button. And we can change the size, width, and height independently. And the depth. And same with the wireframe, we can go to wireframe and we can see our subdivisions. And we have cube mapping, which allows us to map material. On our shape itself, we have a, a material input. If I bring in say some just random uh, image, you can see we just projected that uh, image onto our cube. And if we go to our render tab, we can see that rendered. And let's back our cube up there. So we can see. So as you can tell, though, as I rotate this, it's really not uh, putting it on there any specific way because it's looking for a texture map, which uh, we'll cover when we start going over textures. <laughs> but we can see what this is doing if I uh, go back here and let's say I'm going to throw a transform on this texture map. And if I reduce the size, you can kind of see how it's mapping that texture onto that cube. And uh, we will get into textures and how to properly do textures in another node. But that's what the uh, cube mapping is for. And if I uncheck it, it's not mapping it to the cube. It's just projecting that image on all four sizes, depending on our transform size. So if I go up, it's going to give us the uh, original size. You can see if I transform it around our images on every single uh, side of that cube. So let's go ahead and disconnect these. Jump back in. So the other shape we have is a sphere. And the same with sphere, we've got a radius so we can change the radius of our sphere. We can change the base subdivisions and the height subdivisions, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check this wireframe so you can see what it's doing. So you can see our base is going uh, horizontally and our height is going vertically. So you can change those independently. And our angle, all our angle is gonna do is slice our sphere. So it changes that angle and the latitude is going to slice it on our latitude <laughs> lines. So basically it's going to slice it in half. And uh, this is a good time. Let me go ahead and add a uh, another shape node. So by default, what your shape node is doing when I input a new shape node, it's putting on your origin right here. When we uh, input it directly into our merge node, it's inputting into the origin of a merge node. Now, these shapes have this input as well, which is a scene input. 
So if I want to stack shapes together, I can take this shape and input it into our sphere. And uh, if I change the size of this, you can see our sphere is now uh, put in place on the origin of our original shape. So I can stack another one and I can make this uh, say a cube, change my size and they're stacked. So if you need to stack shapes directly on top of each other, this is how you would do it. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now, another shape we have is the cylinder. And we have the radius. We can change the radius. We can change the height. And we can change our base subdivisions, which you can see will square those off and turn it eventually into a rectangle. And if I hit our wireframe, we can kind of see what's going on with this. So our base subdivisions, we can change our height subdivisions. And we can change the angle of our uh, little cylinder here. And we can change the start angle and the end angle. We can add end caps on the top and bottom. We can select the bottom, we can select the top, and it'll close off our cylinder on the top and the bottom. Now we also have cone, and with a cone, we can adjust the height of our cone. We can adjust the radius of our cone and the top radius. And if we do open that top and that bottom, we have caps so we can close off that top and that bottom. And we have base subdivisions and height subdivisions as well. We also have a torus. Let me rotate this so we can see it a little better. We have a radius. We have a section, which will make it thicker or thinner. We have base subdivisions. And we have height subdivisions. And if you go negative, we can uh, kind of flatten our uh, little torus out. And we can also change the uh, start and end angle of our uh, shape. And we can change the start and end of our latitude. So we can kind of punch, punch kind of like a uh, little indentation there in the middle if we need to and change that make it look like a mushroom we also have an ico and the ico is a uh, sphere that is subdivision dependent so if we look at it now there's very few uh subdivisions so it's squared off but the more we add the rounder it'll get under our visibility tab, we can check whether this is visible or not, whether it's unseen by the camera. So if we go here, we can see our little sphere, but we can uh, hide it from the camera. We can cull our front or our back. And what culling is, I didn't go over this yesterday, I believe, but cull faces basically means from the camera's view, whatever is seen by the camera, is going to get rendered whatever isn't seen whatever's behind is not going to get rendered so it just kind of saves you a little render time but for looking in nothing behind is going to get rendered just what the camera actually sees that's what culling is so if we color our front and we color back we can't see anything under our lighting we can have it affected by lights whether it casts shadows or whether it receives shadows 
So let's go ahead and add a light. And uh, let's bring our light in, up maybe. And uh, remember, we have to have pass-through lights on. And then in our rear view, we need to make sure we turn on our lighting and our shadows. So now we've got our light hitting our little sphere there. If we uh, uncheck affected by lights, it'll turn it on and off. We can turn our shadows on and off and receive shadows. Under matte controls, let me go ahead and add a, another shape. And I'll go over this mat more when we start getting into stuff like talking about Z depth and uh, different things and getting into textures because this is what this affects. But I will bring in a shape and let's make this a cube. And I'm going to bring it behind our sphere. So if we look at this, let's go to our sphere and if I select is matte basically anything behind that camera is not going to be visible well that and anything behind the camera so if you see we've got our little sphere here so anything behind the camera is getting matted out and if I select opaque alpha what this does is it actually adds an alpha of one on top of our uh, little sphere here and our infinite Z just changes our Z depth of what happens within this. And like I said, this all makes sense when we start talking about uh, 3D fog and different stuff like that. We have blend modes in our hardware, just like we did the other day. All the blend modes that are available within our hardware mode. And our blend modes that are available within our software mode. And our gain, if we uh, change that, say, to screen, our gain just changes that gain. For our normals, this is whether we want to see our normals or see our tangents. And we can change the scale of our normals and tangents. And then our object ID is just our object ID. Under materials, this is where we can assign a quick diffuse material to our uh, little shape here. So if I wanted to change the color to uh, that color, now it's that color. And if I go to our render mode, that's what color it is. Now in here we have alpha and opacity. And the difference between the two is your alpha is going to affect the diffuse and the specular colors. So if I change this, we can see our actual specular colors, which is, uh, let me hide our little square for right now. Our specular colors, it's affecting both of them. And what the opacity is doing is it's changing the overall opacity of that material. And then our specular is affecting it afterwards. For our specular, what our specular is doing is this determining the characteristics of the light that reflects off of our object towards a camera. So right now you can just see it's white, but I can change this color. You can see our specular color is kind of changing in there. So if I wanted to make it purple, I can make it purple. Your intensity just uh, tells you how strong that specular is. So if it's something super shiny, I'm going to have it up. If it's a, something a little plasticky and a little more diffused, I'm going to turn it down if it's rougher. And our exponent here just determines the fall off of that specular. So you can see we can change it higher or lower. Your transmittance, this just determines how light passes through your uh, little 3D objects here. So for example, this is a solid sphere. So we don't have any uh, 
opacity or anything to it. It's just a solid sphere. And right now we have our red, green, and blue all at zero, which means no light is actually going to pass through. So it's going to uh, cast a black shadow. Now, if we were to say, raise it to everything to one, that means 100% of the light will pass through and it's going to cast a white shadow. So let's say our little sphere here was uh, like blue glass and we had light shining through it. And on our back wall, we wanted this blue light to reflect on the wall. So we could simply just take this color and pick the same color. So now that color light is passing through. So any objects we had would be reflecting that kind of light onto our object. Your alpha detail right here, when it's set to one, our alpha is going to de determine how much of that light is passed through. So if we start lowering this, this is what's going to dictate how much light is passed through. If we set this to zero, this alpha has no effect on how much light passes through. And uh, we can find a combination of in between to get our cast light to look exactly how we want. Your color detail determines how much of your diffuse color in textures pass through the object as shadows. So you can see them past that color or the texture. And your saturation is just your saturation of those colors. And down here, just your lighting, whether it receives lighting, whether it receives shadows or if it's two sided. So this way, if it's clear, we can tell there's an opposite side of that. And then your material ID is just your material ID. Under your transform. This is where we uh, can transform. We can change the rotation of it on the X, Y, and Z. We can change our pivot, our actual point of origin here. We can change that pivot location. And we can change the overall scale down here as well. Our use target right here just helps face things to a specific target. So say we had our little cube here and let's move away over here and we will select our uh, sphere. And if I needed it to say face that cube, I can select use target and select and drag my pick. And you can see it's changing towards that little uh, cube in the distance. So that's his target now. And you can import transforms as well, but we have none to import. So that is the shape 3D node. Have fun playing with it. And I will see you in the next node breakdown.